Hi, and welcome to Mormon Facts. Mary Elizabeth Rollins was born on April 9, 1818 in Lima, New York, and was the middle child of three children. Her father died in a shipwreck when she was just a child, and at the age of 10, her family moved to Kirtland, Ohio, where they lived with her uncle for two years. During that time, she and her family learned about the Mormon Church. A local Mormon member named Isaac Morley lent her family a copy of the Book of Mormon, but only for one evening. Mary Elizabeth and her family stayed up late reading the Book of Mormon, and by the morning, she had memorized the first verse. When she went to give the book back, Morley was so impressed at how much she had read that he let her keep the book until she had finished. Later, Joseph Smith visited Mary Elizabeth's uncle's home. When looking around, he saw the Book of Mormon on the shelf and asked how they had obtained a copy. Mary Elizabeth's uncle told Joseph about Mary Elizabeth reading it from a borrowed copy from Isaac Morley. Joseph immediately asked, where is your niece? When Elizabeth arrived, Joseph put his hands on Elizabeth's head and gave her a blessing. He then gave the Book of Mormon to Mary Elizabeth and said he would give Brother Morley another. Mary Elizabeth was baptized into the church in October 1830. In that same year, she claimed that Joseph Smith had a private conversation with her saying that she was the first woman God commanded him to take as a plural wife. Elizabeth was 12 years old at that time. On July 20th, 1833, Mary watched a mob tear down the Mormon printing press and throw pages of the Book of Commandments, now known as the Doctrine and Covenants, into the streets. She and her sister grabbed armfuls of the papers despite the mob pursuing them. They hid in a cornfield until the mob passed. They later turned over the papers to Sister Phelps, the wife of W.W. Phelps. Again, in 1834, Joseph Smith told Mary that he had received a revelation to marry her as a plural wife, but because of physical separation and distance, Smith did not pursue the marriage, as he was nearly a thousand miles away in Zion's camp at the time. Mary Elizabeth was married to Adam Leitner on August 11, 1835. Adam was not a member of the Mormon faith, and in the subsequent years they would go on to have ten children. Though married, she admitted that she had dreams of being Joseph Smith's wife. She said, I thought I was a great sinner. I prayed to God to take it from me, for I felt it was a sin. Between 1834 and 1842, Mary Elizabeth claimed that Joseph Smith told her that an angel threatened to take away his life unless he followed God's instruction to practice plural marriage, and that he would be killed unless she agreed to marry him. Don't you think it was an angel of the devil that told you these things? No, it was an angel of God, he replied. During this time, Mary noted, Joseph said I was his before I came here, and all the devils in hell should never get me from him. Mary Elizabeth asked if Emma Smith knew about her, to which Joseph sidestepped the question and replied, Emma thinks the world of you. Mary Elizabeth said that she would not be married to Joseph Smith until she had received her own personal witness. She prayed intensely for many days and remembered Joseph sharing information that angels would often cover their faces in an act of humility to God. She did the same and often covered her face while praying. Shortly afterwards, Mary Elizabeth claimed to have seen an angel that came into her bedroom at night and then left through the window. She told Joseph of the experience and asked why the angel did not speak to her. You covered your face, he told her, and for this reason the angel was insulted. Joseph Smith persisted in his marriage proposals and held out one final argument. He offered salvation to Mary Elizabeth if she would accept his proposal. In 1842, Mary Elizabeth consented to be married to Joseph Smith, although the ceiling did not cancel her marriage to her current husband, Adam Leitner. She was the sixth of Smith's plural wives, and they were married in secret. They were sealed in February 1842 by Brigham Young. At the time, Mary was pregnant with her son, George, from Adam Leitner. Mary mentions that her husband was away at the time of the sealing to Smith, so Adam's consent or knowledge is unclear. Smith's first wife, Emma Smith, did know about the marriage. Mary later reported that she knew that Smith had other children from his plural wives. Mary signed an affidavit in 1902 to document her sealing to Smith. In 1844, Joseph Smith was killed, and afterwards Brigham Young and Heber C. Kimball offered themselves as proxy husbands to widows of Joseph Smith. Mary accepted the offer from Young, and she and Young were sealed on May 22, 1845, in the Nauvoo Temple. By 1845, the majority of the Latter-day Saints had left Nauvoo. The Leitners arrived in Salt Lake City, Utah on September 15, 1863, and then settled Minersville, Utah. Her husband, Adam, became ill and died on August 19, 1885. He never joined the church, and he left Mary with over $100 in debt. Before she died, she claimed to have had a vision of the prophet as was promised to her by Heber C. Kimball before he died. Suddenly I saw just outside the door three men. They stood about two feet from the ground. These men were the prophet Joseph, his brother Hiram, and Heber C. Kimball. Joseph stood in the middle with an arm around each of their shoulders. They began fading away as the going down of the sun. 
Mary lived the rest of her life destitute and may have suffered from depression later in her life. She traveled occasionally to Salt Lake City and relied heavily on the church to receive money since she was one of Joseph Smith's widows. She died on December 17, 1913 in Minersville, Utah. At the time of her death, she was the last surviving plural wife of Joseph Smith.